Hi there! In this screencast we'll have a look at the basics of .cover, a code coverage tool for .NET. Code coverage tools analyze the lines of codes that are covered for an application, either during a test run or when running and using the application itself. .cover comes with its own unit test runner that supports common unit test frameworks such as NUnit, XUnit and MSTest. If we open a class containing unit tests, we can see that .cover detects all test methods. From the gutter, we can use the test runner menu and choose how we want to run our tests. We can run it, debug it or cover the unit tests. We can also run coverage for all tests in our solution, which is what I'll do now. .cover will run our tests and analyze which statements in our code have been executed by the tests that are run. In the coverage results, we can now see what percentage of our code has been covered by this test run. As we can see, the unit test code is included in coverage results as well. This may be interesting in some cases, but right now it skews the code coverage percentage. We're only interested in coverage for actual application code, so let's filter out all the test projects here. Now let's drill down the tree here. For our application, we can see some classes only have partial code coverage. Others have 100% code coverage. We can double click a class or method in the tree and then see exactly which lines of code have been covered and which ones haven't. If we look at the constructor of this class, we can clearly see that all lines are covered. The left gutter shows green markers, meaning all statements on that line have been covered by unit tests. If we go down, there are a couple of grey markers in the gutter. Grey means only part of the statements have been covered. When hovering the marker, we can see the covered statement gets a green background and the uncovered statements get a grey background. The marker can have another color as well, red, which means that the line was covered but had a test failure. Let's quickly jump to another class so I can show you something. If we click the marker in the gutter, we can see all the tests that covered this particular line of code. We could jump to the tests or run the test from there. Now let's quickly jump back to our coverage results and click the hotspots view. This view shows us the classes that are the most risky in our code. .cover calculates the complexity of the code in that class and verifies how much code is tested. The more complex the code and the fewer tests, the bigger it will show in the hotspots view. The classes shown in here need additional testing for sure. Now imagine we want to know which lines of code are being touched while executing a given use case in our application. We can run our application using .cover and then analyze those code paths. From the menu, we can cover our startup project or a standalone application that runs on our machine or even on a remote machine. .cover supports covering pretty much every .NET application, including web applications, .pf, UWP and so on. Now let's cover our startup projects. We can specify some additional startup options, for example if we want to open the browser or not. Clicking run will launch our application as well as the .cover controller. Let's click around in our application and open some of the pages that are listed. If we want to start analyzing the data, we can capture a snapshot and see the results in Visual Studio. There we go. This is a representation of the code that was executed while clicking around in the application. We can go through the tree and drill through the projects and namespaces that were touched when our application was running. We can also double click an item in the tree and jump to the source codes. We may also want to share code coverage information with a team member. This can be done by exporting the report as XML so that they can open it in Visual Studio. We can also use any of the other formats in case they have different tools being used. Let's try HTML here and then select where we want to store the results. Et voila! We can now see code coverage information and drill down through the namespaces and classes. Or click on a method and even see the lines of code that are covered or not. Always keep in mind that code coverage analysis is not so much about the percentage of code being tested, but about discovering the parts of our code that are being tested or not. You should decide if 100% code coverage makes sense for your code or not. That cover can and will help you in finding code which is untested. Thank you for watching. Till next time.